Yep, yep. Uh, everything you said is correct. And 10 points. The block is good. Uh, the item build is the same one I would go for as well. Uh, one more note, one more, one more thing I can add is that Storm versus Shadow Friend. It, it, we have a, a few possible block, blocking solutions, actually. Uh, ideally, yes, you would have creeps on the high ground, and he would need to play from the low ground. But if we overblock the creeps, and they end up on his high ground, that's okay, because he has abysmal uh, rattling damage, so he will be forced to use raises. And if he's using races on creeps, he is not using them on you. And same principle on if the lay, if the wave is underblocked, and the creeps end up end up on your tower, he simply doesn't have enough right click power to really threaten you. Your right clicks. I mean, it's it's the least ideal scenario. The best case scenario is actually overblocking, just just so we can force some raises. And the very close thing is uh, this st standard stop at the high ground. So let's see how that goes. Yeah, I mean, the starting position is ideal for you, I would say. It's okay. Yeah, I'm just going to repeat the same thing I think I've talked about the last replay session. Do not save your mana for the first few waves because these are the most important waves for you to get battle before mid two. This is okay. This is the only okay, okay part of the game, part of the laning where it's okay to waste your mana for the last hits. If if you if you feel even the slightest chance that the tower or a Seth can mess with the creep hit. Just just use that remnant. I, I, I can see what you were going for. You were really hoping to either right click or remnant and it's and it's it's always just like a just a little little bit too short. And that's what I'm talking about. If there is a slight chance that it's gonna be a little little bit too short, just just pre place those remnants, man. Okay, now I'm gonna uh, give a little pro tip here. Just one, one sec. Their perspective and, and do some math. Uh, we have the melee creep closest to storm, and then the next one closest to storm, and then the range creep. Uh, in how many seconds would you say the creep closest to storm, the one right on top of the health bar, will die? Yeah, pretty much that. And then the next target will die in how many seconds? It's about three seconds. So let's rewind back. You you will soon you will soon get the whole picture, I promise. So the way we approach the lanes, uh is that we always have a mental image of what will happen in the next uh, one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. And if we can antici anticipate the, the exact thing that will happen, we can manipulate it to, to our favor. So if we can conclude that the first creep will die in one second, the second one in like three, and then let's add the factor that you can also contribute to, to a creep dying. So uh, bear with me here. If you wanted, from this pause, how soon could you take down the range creep? Imagine SF isn't there. Just work with me. Yeah. Three, four seconds, I would say. And can you see the bigger picture yet? Exactly. You can group all of these together. So imagine, imagine, that right here at this moment, you know that in the next... One, two, three seconds, either with your help or with the tower's help, three creeps can be killed. What if, right now, right at this pause moment, you walked down to the river, hit the range creep twice, right clicked SF, and placed a remnant? What happens? All, the th all three of the creeps die at once with the same remnant without SF or the tower interfering. Am I correct? 
Exactly, which don't matter because uh, SF's level one races, they suck ass and you have branched uh, tangos to negate it. And then you're having three uncontested last hits done, which is the best case scenario you can have in this lane. And that's that's the thing you you would need to uh, imagine in in the a lot imagine a lot like what can you make happen in the next one two three four five seconds. So if you if you would walk down just a little bit, and as you're walking down, you sink a few right clicks into the range creep, and in between those, you just do a quick aggro check on a set. If you just quickly right click a set, don't even need to hit him, just right click him and keep moving. Those two creeps will follow you. The tower will help bring the first one down. Your right clicks will help bring range creep down. And then your final right click is whatever you want it to be. You can, you can hit the range creep, you can hit the middle melee creep. And, well, sometimes it's not, it might not be this ideal. Sometimes one creep might have one HP left. But the idea is there, is that you can manipulate the creep wave into your favor to be the most efficient and allow your opponent or the tower the least amount of failure to mess with your last hits. It's almost the same. I, 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 never, I don't think I ever mentioned actually dragging those creeps out of the tower range just by abusing the creep aggro. We usually talked about bringing them in, but right now we're, we're actually consciously getting those melee creeps outside of the tower range and into the river, which isn't, which isn't a, a thing many lower MMR people think about in the first place. Yes, yes, that's the difference between like a 6k player and a 9k player. Uh, I mean, both, both of those will recognize that they can make a certain movement, but the, how often will they recognize and how flawless can they execute such movement? That's what will differ from the 6k player and the 9k player. I mean, 2k player, he will not even see the movement. But uh, between good players and very good players, that's the difference. They will simply abuse more advantages. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're here to exactly recognize more moments, which you might not see yourself in, and and those which you do recognize and you're not sure how to execute ex execute it, that's where we come in and just uh, break down the scene and see how we can approach it. Okay, this is a quick note. This is for everyone from 1k to 9k players who are playing against SF. Never ever dance around the rage creep. Never. Why? Because SF will always use the race for it. Pretty, st pretty straightforward. Like, why, why are you here? Why couldn't you just walk ar around the creep and not eat the race? Yeah, you can still deny it from the side. I mean, you sh sure, you will, you will need to uh, shoot your projectile a little bit earlier, but there is no need to eat the races. It, right now, it will not matter. I mean, uh, this is forgivable because, again, uh, single, single race at level 1 is inconsequential. But at later levels, this can start a chain combo, which will kill you. Uh, I don't think there was a reason for you to walk, walk out all the way. I think what you attempted to do was draw the aggro and walk back. But uh, you can always just right-click SF and stay in place, and the crease will still move you. You only walk out if there's a clear reason for you to walk out like if, if he's aggressively going on you with raises but right now he's just he's just focused on that tower you can, you can still stay here be outside of the race range because you know again he's gonna just attempt to kill the range creep and still try to mess you there's the, you can you can stay on the side on either side of the high ground but low ground is bad for you because there's a chance to miss But yeah, so far the biggest offenders for this lane stage of yours was the first way, first minute, the way you were not able to execute the, the multiple remnant last hits, even though the opportunity was, was there.
Again, I think we have the same patterns which we discussed last game. You're playing way too safe. You have full health. You have tang you branches. You have tangos. SF level one, level two. He, he is not a threat yet. You can just hit him in the face, and he can heal herself up because you'll have battle coming up. There's no reason for you to be so passive about it because you you literally literally losing griefs here. Like right right now, what's gonna happen in the next five seconds? Three even, not five. Yeah. So now Yeah. So now you have two options. You can just uh stay from from afar and, and hit the range creep with the overloaded hit. Option two is just to walk up to the range creep and place a remnant. The option one Hitting with overload is more risky because those three melee creeps hitting the range creep, well, two, they give enough window wiggle room for SF to right click even with his low damage. So I would say the best option is to just walk and place a remnant. And what's he gonna do? He will raise you maybe two times, maybe three times. And then what? Now he has raise on cooldown, he cannot use raise for, for the last hitting. You can deny him back. And all the damage will be healed with Branch and Tango. There's no way that SF makes a... I'm not going to say bad play. He's still going to make a play, but that play in no way will zone you out. I mean, better SFs at level 1, they could just like approach into melee range and try to get 3 raises on you right away. And... Sometimes it works if the player does not understand what's going to happen next. And the better SF players against worse any hero players. If if the SF player can stack three races level one, and the the opponent does not recognize that he now has three damage stacks on him, and then SF waits out a cooldown, eats two mangoes, and then on top of those three stacks gets two more, the player dies. How do you counter this? You simply walk away until the timer disappears. And now, SF has used almost all of his mana for nearly nothing. This happens rarely, it happens, but that's how you counterplay it. But most of the time, SF simply will not deal enough damage before level 3 to you. So, to summarize our first two minutes, you have full health, you have full mana, and you have good, decent regen. Worst case scenario, you send out a salve. But in no way does SF prevent you from getting those last hits. Uh, right here, a little bit uh, uh, open opportunity for you to make a little play is, is just right click SF and what's gonna happen the creep will move towards you which means you will hit him first SF will still try to deny it but you will hit him first so it's gonna be yours and then you can just deny the melee creep so that's two two creeps for the cost of one or he is forced to use race which is which is also good for you Okay, again, I'm, uh, I'm gonna need you to always think about what will happen in the next five seconds. So what will happen in the next three seconds? No, 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 a little simpler. The creeps will meet in the high ground. So as soon as you recognize that the creeps will meet in the high ground, what do you do? Yeah, exactly. At this very moment, you can just... You have all three melee creeps in your aggro range. Do you, do you know the aggro range? 
Do you know one little thing Storm's attack range has in common with the aggro range? They are nearly the same, yes, so it's really, really easy to visualize. Like, if you can reach the target without walking, you can throw the aggro as well. Right, so I know from this picture that you will definitely draw the closest melee creep to yourself. Maybe two more, maybe not. I'm not too sure. But th these moments are easily recognizable. So the first thing you do is recognize that the position isn't favorable. You right-click as F. Th that's it. No pauses, no no delays. Just as soon as you as soon as, as soon as you recognize this moment, you right-click as F. And and why did I say think in advance is that this moment was telegraphed five seconds before it happened, right? And now we have wasted like three seconds not doing it. And that's what we all have all talked about. That's those little things that add up. Those little inefficiencies. Like you see you see the right play. But it takes it takes a while for you to actually execute it. And that's why SF is right now leading the lane. If if those creeps were pulled back correctly, SF will, would now have, have his attention not on you, but on the range creep. Because the range creep would be under attack by the melee creeps. You would not be in his raise range. And he would have to decide between raising you or the range creep. And you yourself could freely last hit those creeps with your remnants or the overload. This. As soon as SF gets in melee range, I mean, as soon as you see SF getting in melee range at level 3, you cannot allow him to do that because he will start stacking raises on you. That's the thing we talked about level 1, that some SFs will try to get 5 stacks at level 3. He no longer needs 5 stacks, he just needs 3 stacks. And then if he gets one more, you're zoned out or dead. So if you see him walking towards you, you, you just walk back. Like you see, you see how effortlessly he brings down your health. Like right here, as soon as you see it, you just get out, get out. Do not even think about trading. It's not about dying. It's never about dying. It's about you being zoned out. The thing worse than death is you not feeling feeling comfortable approaching the lane. Okay, you die here, what's gonna happen? You just teleport back, you still get three creeps, no big losses. If you're zoned out, you're just a sitting duck. Cannot approach the lane, you cannot last hit, you're losing XP, if you all the denies, you're losing gold. Death is better than being zoned out. Of course, you don't, you don't want either, but ideally, if you die, you die. All right, let's uh, let's again let's again let's again look at the exercise of trying to think a few seconds ahead. Okay, so you trade with the Sef. and now this screen is giving you information. What kind of information? What is Sef about to do? In the next five seconds, like like we've talked about. But he isn't. He's facing the rune and using bottle. What does that tell you? He's gonna go get the rune in the next five seconds. Right, so what does the information that the SF is gonna go take the rune tell us? Sure, when he comes back, he will attempt to raise you. But the thing I was getting at is that he will not be in the lane after he is done with the creeps for about 5 to 6 seconds, right? And as we talked before, how long should it take you to clear a ranged creep? Yeah, so that's, in other words, you can clear the range creep faster than a Seth will return to the lane. So let's look at the situation again. 
very clearly Seth is standing in the river, so he will have the shortest amount of time to leave and come back. So he's definitely going for the ring. And right now, that's right now, right here, when you're starting to make the bad play. You have this information, but you do not recognize it and do not act on it. If Seth is leaving, he's going to be gone for about 5 seconds, more or less. What prevents you from using this time as he's leaving, just, just going to the river, meeting those ranged creeps and getting them down uncontested before he returns. Look at this, two, two, two juicy range creeps, which can be taken down before he comes back and, and threatens, denies, or all raises. And then after that's done, you can still take the rune. There's no way he's chasing you, right? And then you just walk around, come back, and then you can still take one or two melee creeps. And that is the best the best player you can squeeze out, out of this unfavorable lane, at this moment. So yeah. You would ideally take those range keeps, go get the rune. You see a Seth coming for you. Just walk a bit back, teleport back. No need to take the raises. But yeah, SF is good here. He's doing the right play. And luckily for you, he did leave. Leave you some creeps to last hit. But yeah, we could have definitely played it in a different way, which led to better results, I would say. Yeah, like as of now, SF is completely dominating this lane. Yeah, which is basically your cue to just uh, play careful or jungle from this moment on. But yeah, from what I've seen, We've definitely had a lot of options to make this lane not reach this state at all. Yeah, if you see he's playing aggressive, he's owning you out, then you, you cannot prevent it. Just, just go jungle. Don't waste your time here. Yeah, I don't think you'll have any new information from this lane. Let's take a little break and see one of my recent games against the Sefs. See if we can uh, put you in the right direction in the future. So yeah, uh, the wave positioning is pretty much the same. So let's see how I approach this lane. We have exactly mirror match for for your game and my game, right? Very similar circumstances. So the first thing I do is I, I make sure that if he draws aggro, those creeps will not reach my tower range. I sidestep. If he attempts to draw aggro, I will take the creeps back. And that's why I'm, I, I am outside the tower range. Because I don't want those creeps going into the tower range. I would like to have more control over last hits because I have higher base damage. See, he, 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 he drew the aggro, and those creeps stayed in place. Uh, were they going for the ta uh, a little bit closer, I would have taken actions and made sure they would not cross the aggro line. Denied. 
I am I am playing a little bit more with Cloudflix than, than than the remnants. But yeah, the rem remnants are definitely definitely on the line. Yeah. I mean I could have played it both ways. I could have pushed it with remnants, but I, I feel that if uh since the next wave will still meet on the high ground. I can squeeze milk, milk a little bit more of my right clicks without pushing the lane first. So a little bit different circumstances, but but uh, right here is where it uh, goes back to the usual thing. As soon as I see SF, as soon as I see SF threatening my range creep, you can see those little little arrows. I begin moving. I am I am watching the game a few seconds in advance. As that draws aggro, I am already moving. Where am I going? Exactly. Time is of the essence. The sooner you recognize it, the sooner you react, the more chance of success. And that's it, there's no way he denies it. Just impossible. There we go. Decent amount of right clicks, zero harassment damage because he is forced to choose between me and the creeps. And the next wave is under tower, which is also good for me because I can work the aggro range. I mean, this this still isn't ideal. I'm not a nine k player. I'm still missing some right click, uh, some last hits which I shouldn't miss in the first place. But the core idea is there. Now, because I have been pretty successful in avoiding his harassment, I feel comfortable going aggressive on him because even if he stacks three races, I can heal it back because I have haven't been using my region and I do have a battle coming up. So in this case, it's okay to trade. And see how vastly different those few few waves were between your game and my game. I mean, we are pretty close in MMR, but the decision making is, is what makes or breaks the lane. And right now, I am even ahead of him in the, in the network department. And because we have forced him under the tower, we are also free to take both the rings. So while in your game, uh, SF was leading the game from the moment he got that first race stack on you at level 3, in this game, I don't think SF was ever leading the lane. Because uh, we keep uh, pushing it ourselves. I push with remnants, he pushes with races. It, since it's never static, it bounces between towers. One wave could be his, one wave could be ours. My mind, under my high ground. 90% of the time, pushing is the right way. Uh, I, I did release a video recently against Marcy and I, I, I have outlined in a text guide that against Marcy if you can make the wave static, you make the wave static. Then or there, I do, did not advise pushing. So yes, there are exceptions. Let's let's go through the rest of the laning stage. See if we can have some more pointers for you by comparison. But I mean, you can see how how I am allowing myself to be so aggressive. It's because I've I've had such a good time with the with the first few waves.
he should have died here. Sometimes he just got unlucky. He should have absolutely died here. But I miss. Damn. Yeah. See, e e even with the the bad outcome like that, we, I think I've still managed to win this lane. Because yeah, he st he still is not comfortable zoning me out, because of the way we both of us are are approaching the lane. I'm not, the only the, the only the only the, the reason I died because I I went aggressively, and he by all accounts should have died here. But the only time I went aggressively is when I believed I had a kill chance. Other than that, you can see that I never put myself in a position to eat more than two raises. Exactly. Yeah. We, we, we are always making him choose between myself and the creeps. And as soon as, soon as level 6, as soon as I have level 6, I keep looking for opportunities to, to kill him. Because uh, no matter what the lane ca outcome is, unless you're severely behi behind and he has like a lot of one, st one stacks and raindrops, he is always a kill lane. Okay, level 6, and SF is now my target. You see how I'm even playing super aggressively because I want him to show. I want to see him. I want to see where he is. He is. I want to champ him. I don't want to champ him under the tower, but I want to champ him in the river. Even if he's a little bit ahead on farming levels. I mean, he knows that I want to champ him, so he, he is playing a little bit more careful than usual. And what what I'm saying with this is that, uh, how do I put it? My mere existence at level 6 in the lane severely limits his movements. Like, he can no longer just walk at me with raises, he will die. He can no longer get into the river, he will die. His only option is to use long-range long raises, clear the waves and go jungle. If you can survive to level 6, the lane is yours. You see how, how aggressively I'm playing, because I want him to show. I want him to know I'm here. And I think that's the kill, because right now he doesn't know where I am, and he's in the river, which was a fatal mistake, being in the river against Storm. Yep, here we go. And after that, I think I've made him my bitch. Yep, then he dies again. Well, this is a little bit irrelevant. I just want to see him die. Something about a SF's dying just makes me feel good. So yeah. 
I hope you you've uh, picked something up from this this analysis. Well, well, I gotta say I, I myself am not as efficient with the zipping around the target as I would like to be, would like myself to be. So, my best advice is to simply practice. Just practice, practice, practice. I mean, with the small, small zips, you can just zip in place or zip minimal distances. But when you need to zip around the target uh, and, and, and kite some dangerous spells, that's that's where you can be a little less efficient than desired. That's that's my own pitfall. Yeah, you, 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 you forgot. I mean, you didn't forget, but you... You zip before the first right click connected, and this is fixed with practice. I can tell exactly what happened. You simply zipped again without waiting for the right click to connect. Could be, could be. Yeah, this is fixable with practice. Well, I think we have used our entire hour on just the laning phase, so if you'll want to extend this and talk the rest of the game or items, I think it'll have to be another session. Yeah. Oh, look, uh, Seth commended you. <laughs> Good job, Storm. All right, well, so yeah, uh, digest the information, try to be a little bit more aggressive on the first few few lanes, not just against yourself, against all the heroes. J just waste all their mana, it's fine. It just just waste, just use it on every single creep, it's it's okay, you're, you're practicing. Just make sure you get this battle before level 2, before the level, uh, middle 2 runs. This is... Yeah, because I, I've, I've, I've talked about this in the first first analysis, and, and I still see it here, yes, I would say that's your main issue. Yep. Anytime. See ya.